Hello, this is Joyce Latimer from Virginia Tech, and we're going to talk today about how you can determine PGR drench rates. And again, I'd like to thank Fine Americas for supporting the video blog series as well as the online blog so that we can get this information out to you. In addition, I would like to thank Fine Americas for funding the research that you're actually going to see in this video. So first of all, how do you, as a grower, determine PGR drench rates? I'm thinking mostly of products that you may already use as a spray and you have a reason or a goal or want to switch the application method to a drench. Do you just make an educated guess? Do you take rates that work for crops of similar genetics or a similar growth habit or a similar cultivar? Or do you use rates recommended by other growers? Or published rates? You've got our PGR guides out there. There are a lot of drench rates recommended in those. Of course, you're going to adjust those for your own location, right? Or do you look at some calculated method? Can you base a drench rate on a known effective spray rate? There is actually a rule of thumb wandering around out in the grower world that says that you can make a drench rate at one-tenth the rate, the part per millions, that you use for a spray rate. So we thought we would look at that, see if that actually worked. So we put together a study using two crops that were sensitive to Piccolo, to Peclobutrazol, and two that were not so sensitive. We used Piccolo 10XC, made our applications two to ten days after potting. We had an untreated control. We also had a spray application at using a rate that was effective in previous experiments. On the sensitive crops, that was 80 parts per million. On the not so sensitive crops, that was 160 parts per million. So for our drench applications, like I said, that rule of thumb is 10% of the spray application part per million. So we decided we'd back off a little bit, and so we did a 5%, 10%, 20%, or 40% of the spray application part per million. That was the rate we used for our drench applications. We were growing in tray gallon pots, so we applied a 10 fluid ounce drench per pot. And we measured our height and width at 3, 6, and 9 weeks after treatment. So first of all, let's look at Veronica Pink Panther. This is one of our sensitive crops at three weeks after treatment. You can see that it was not really responsive to our spray application, although it had been in previous studies. But it was very responsive to our drench applications. Again, this is 5%, 10%, 20%, or 40% of this 80 part per million spray rate. At six weeks after treatment, you can see that we have essentially saturated that response with our drench rates. One of the perks of working with rate trials is you really get to see what happens when you overdose the plant. So you can see that these just really did saturate the response, the growth response of these plants. However, it is very interesting that it did not significantly affect the flowering of the crop. It did not reduce the days to flower or the percent of the plants flowering. It did not reduce it significantly. Once we got into these higher drench rates, we did delay flowering. We tended to delay flowering. And we reduced the number of flower stalks on these plants. So for Veronica, I would say that our rule of thumb is not really working, that those rates, even our low rate, is really too high a drench rate. So let's look at Agastache. Three weeks after treatment, our spray application, we got a little bit of response. So a good bit of response to our low drench rate, and then we basically saturated the response, had excessive growth reductions. At six weeks after application, you can see that our uh, spray application and our control are severely overgrown. However, our four part per million drench application really looks pretty good, but we still have a saturated response with these higher drench rates. All of these plants did flower at six weeks after treatment. So again, we didn't have a problem with the time to flower. However, the higher rates, the 16 and we also had a 32 part per million, did reduce the number of flowers on those plants. So here, for a very vigorous plant, maybe our 5% our of the spray application rate would hold up, would work as far as a marketable plant. But anything higher than that was definitely excessive growth regulation. 
How about penstemon? These were vernalized plants. The spray application was uh, very effective on this penstemon. And the drench applications caused excessive growth reduction with all of those rates. Six weeks after application, we see starting to get a little bit of grow out with our eight part per million, but basically very persistent growth reduction with all drench rates. So let's look at these plants at nine weeks after treatment. We can see that our spray application did reduce plant growth. It was about 30% smaller than the control plants, and all of our drench applications were still causing excessive growth reduction. It is interesting, however, that although these were vernalized plants, very few of the control plants flowered, whereas those treated with the spray application or these two lower rates of the drench, all of those plants flowered. Flowering response is not necessarily tied to our growth regulation. So our last crop here is Monarda Jacob Klein, and again this is the second of these not so responsive crops. So our spray application was 160 parts per million and we did have good response to that with a 32% reduction in height at three weeks after treatment. Our lowest drench rate, again this is 5% of our spray rate, gave us a 70% height reduction here at three weeks after treatment. And we had even greater reductions in height with our higher drench rates. At six weeks after application, however, you can see that our spray application is pretty much run out. Controls are way overgrown. Our eight part per million trench looks pretty good. But again, excessive growth reduction with these higher rates. Actually, at nine weeks after treatment, this plant here still had a 45% height reduction, but it was really the only marketable plants we had in the group and that was at the time of flowering. This eight part per million did not delay flowering, but it did reduce the number of flowers. So again, our rule of thumb doesn't work. The 10% of the spray solution gave us excessive growth reduction at 16 parts per million. The 5% or so this eight part per million may be okay, but it's probably a little more growth reduction than you would be planning for with an initial trench on this crop. Again, we're looking for a rule of thumb. Maybe it doesn't exist. So in summary, that proposed one-tenth of the spray rate is not a suitable rule of thumb for applying drenches based on the spray rate. You may have better results testing rates that are based on a percentage or a multiple of the milligrams active ingredient in an effective spray rate. But really what it's going to come down to is you have to run your own trials based on small numbers of plants before you start making the large scale applications. Although we have plenty of resources available on PGR rates, these really will serve only as a starting point for your own trials. I'd love to be able to give you a nice little rule of thumb that always worked, but I'm afraid we just don't have it yet. So run your own trials and make your own decisions. Thanks again to Fine Americas for supporting our research and supporting our video series. Have a great day.